As your Google Cloud deployment grows, so can your permissions management needs. With fixed time and resources, you may be looking to find a more efficient way to manage permissions and strengthen the security of your expanding deployment. For example, let's say you have development, staging, and prod instances to manage. Efficiency might lead you to grant every developer at your company the view, edit, and even delete privileges for services in your production environment. Strengthening security, on the other hand, means limiting the number of principals, or users, who can make changes to a prod environment to only those necessary, such as some select service accounts and users from certain groups. It can seem like these two goals are opposing forces. To solve for security, you could create a complex hierarchy of roles that allows you to have different permissions for different instances and apply them to different users on an ad hoc basis. But that is time consuming and does not scale. Or you could lock everything down, but locking everything down is not an option for you to run your business. Thankfully, with Google Cloud IAM, you can use a combination of IAM allow rules and IAM deny rules to craft permission solutions tailored to your needs. This approach leads to a permission set that is much easier to understand and implements security policies at scale. And it protects you from granting overly permissive roles. Let's dive in a bit deeper into how to use these rules when setting permissions for users. This is done by assigning them roles that have certain permissions. An IAM allow rule lets you clearly state the general idea of what a set of users can do. IAM allow policy lets you grant granular access to Google Cloud resources. As an example, you can create a rule that gives roles that give read, edit, and delete permissions on all instances to a principal set of all your developers. IAM deny policies are more coarse-grained that let you explicitly prohibit access to certain resources regardless of existing allow rules. IAM deny rules are a useful addition that allow you to state the exceptions to allow rules. For example, you can clearly state no developers other than those identified as Site Reliability Engineers SREs, have roles with read, edit, and delete permissions on prod server. IAM deny does this by gatekeeping the input to the IAM allow tests. IAM deny policies always supersede IAM allow policies and override conflicting IAM allow rules. It runs before the allow listing is even checked. So if the users are denied by a deny rule, then they will not even check if they pass allow rules. So let's take a look at how to use these IAM rules, starting with the allow bindings, which are made up of principles and the permission roles they are allowed, and optionally, the conditions under which they receive those roles. The allow rules also utilize metadata that contains many other important bits of information that you may use. See our documentation for the current types of metadata used. IAM policies include deny rules that complement allow rules. Deny rules are made of the users who will be denied permissions, shown as denied principles here. Users who will not be denied by this rule, shown as exception principles here. The permissions which are denied and the conditions when this rule will be applied. The metadata that goes with deny rules also contains many other important bits of information that you may use. See our IAM documentation for the current types of metadata used. When planning your IAM policy, remember that the permissions hierarchy flows from organizations to folders, then to projects. Permissions on projects don't affect folders or organizations, while permissions on organizations affect all folders within them and all their projects. As you plan out your permissions, keep your permissions as granular as you can, following the principle of least privilege. If you'd like to know more about IAM Allow and Deny, please check out the links listed in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips on IAM and org policy. Until next time, thanks for watching.